This is uh, Jason Shuckross, Alex Krogh. We are the Fantasy Football Sackos. We have the six must-draft players on top today. That's four. That's you're showing four to the camera. That's okay. There now we got six. There we're okay. Wow. The the Antonio Alfonseca six finger special. Six must draft players. If you haven't already, you should go to our fancy our website, thefantasyfootballpsychos.com. Get our sack of sheet. It's the best place that you can possibly prepare for your draft. There's 150 individual players. There's tiered rankings. There's individual rankings. We're going to send out an updated ranking this week of everything that's gone up, that's gone down. It's going to be great. It's yeah, perfect it's for your time. draft. If you need to prepare for your entire draft in under two hours not six. There's only one best place to do it. It's off of our website. Get the Sacco sheet. Don't use that ESPN spreadsheet or rankings thing. Everybody else is do, using that. Use ours. You're going to end up with the best team. You're going to make money this season and you got to have it. Stop using the same cheat sheet as everybody else and finishing in seventh place and missing the playoffs. You know, that's, that's not great. That's not, that's not great. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos, Jason and Alex back again for another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos. We are going to try and do some shorter, more digestible videos for you this week so we can get a couple extra in and just make it easier for you to listen to as you prepare for your drafts on uh, Labor Day weekend or later. Hopefully it's go you're time, baby. Labor Day it's or later. draft time. These are our six must draft players taking it off. Number one at the top, Saquon Barkley. Um, Saquon for the last two years has really been injured. Um, two years ago, tore his ACL, missed the basically the entirety of the 2020 season. Last season came back just was visibly not himself uh not only that but he was dealing with joe judge and company at the helm judge (sighs) judy baby as their head coach he's gone they wish it was judge judy um they do thank god he's gone um but saquon has shown that he can produce at, at an rb1 level top three fantasy back level uh now you have brian dable in there hopefully to save the day we think so anyway um, he has pledged to get the ball to Saquon early and often, and he has followed through on that so far this preseason. In the first preseason game, the offense was out there for 12 snaps. Uh, Saquon ran routes on seven of those 12 plays and got touches on five of those 12 plays. Just absolutely bananas usage. He is by far and away the best weapon that that team has, and Brian Dable finally actually recognizes it and funnels the ball to him like Joe Judge never did. Um, um, wishes he had. Uh, Barkley has shown. Should have. Yes, should have. Barkley has shown uh, that he can um, also um, produce that high receiving output as a running back, which is really what you need to finish as an RB1. In his rookie season, he had 91 catches on more than 120 targets for more than 700 Please. receiving yards and four touchdowns. Um, shown he's done it before. I would salivate over getting numbers close to that this season. Um, his current end of second or mid second round ADP right now is going at 17, 18 in that range. If you go J Jeff in the first round or cup, you know, or he's a, I, he's a great comeback pick. Fantastic. He should be going so much earlier than that. He should be going at the turn at the latest and if not the back end of the first. So he's a huge value right now going in the middle of of the second round. And I think he's going to greatly outperform his ADP. And the answer to that offense is not Kenny Galladay. And there's been a couple of clips going around of him not blocking on screen passes and how much guaranteed money he has. And it wouldn't be a giant surprise ah, pun if they cut Kenny Galladay. Uh, because he he just is not the answer. But who is the answer is Saquon Barkley. There's a reason he was drafted as the top five pick a couple of years ago. All those catches, all those yards, a offensive mastermind where he proved with the Buffalo Bills that, hey, I will design an offense around what our weapons are. And now he's got the chance to do it with a running back, which he didn't really have before with Singletary or whoever or uh, Moss or whoever you want to you want to throw at running back. Now he's got the ultimate weapon in Saquon receiving, rushing, better offensive line, 
quarterback is hopefully serviceable. Uh, but at the absolute worst, he's going to outlet it down to Saquon and let's get all those yardage. He's a dynamite play in PPR. We think he's an above average get in half PPR uh, because of all those potential receiving yardage. And not that far behind him is our next guy. Our next second, our second uh, must draft player is Aaron Jones. Uh, Aaron Jones was tied for seventh in targets amongst all running backs last season with 65 and the Packers simultaneously uh, also had the fifth most targets vacated in the off season uh, bye, amongst bye, NFL bye. teams after the departures of both Devonte Adams and Marquez Valdez Scantling, as Alex likes to say, I call him MVS. Um, almost 250 targets gone or up for grabs now in total. 44 percent of the team's target share last season up for grabs. Who are you going to throw to, Aaron? Aaron Jones, A to A, baby. Um, and no, th- I mean, they're not all going to go to Watson and Lazard and Sammy Watkins. Um, I do like a few of those guys more than most analysts like them. Alan Lazard in particular, go Iowa State. Um, <clears throat> however, it's my opinion that Aaron Jones could potentially end up leading all running backs in targets this season, which would make him a huge value at current ADP. And that's because I'm projecting a lot of uh, two running back backfields and Aaron Jones split out wide with Dylan in the backfield. Um, I think Dylan's going to be annoying at times and probably end up seeing a lot of the goal line usage. He's just a bigger dude. It's more what he's made for. But I the think quad on the father, <laughs> the quad father. I love that. But I also think you're going to end up seeing a lot of Aaron Jones gimmicky plays at the goal line to, that create uh, opportunities for him out in space. So, um, I'm excited for Aaron Jones this season. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me to see him kind of be almost like a a better Cordero Patterson was last year where Cordero was split (laughs) out on the outside a little bit. Oh, my God, yes. But but Aaron Jones is just way better at everything than Cordero Patterson. Well, yeah, that helps. (laughs) So, you know, whether it's lined up in the backfield and he's better than Cordero Patterson or whether he's lined up in the uh, slot or uh, any anywhere else for that matter, give him the gimmicky plays. Right. There's not a ton. There's not a ton of weapons out there on the outside, at least that we're aware of yet. And maybe that'll develop a little bit throughout the season. But if there is one known on that offense other than Aaron Rodgers, it's Aaron Jones. So why not project him to have a RB one season? That's where he's being drafted. Yes, it's in the second round. If you get him, if you take a wide receiver in the first round, which I get it if you have to take Cupper Jefferson, the rest of them, I'm saving it. I need running back, running back. Give me Aaron Jones in the second round. That's fantastic. That half PPR upside with the receiving. I think it's going to be a tall task for him to lead the the league in catches or targets for that matter. But I would be shocked if he's not in the top five. And that's good enough for me. Me too, buddy. Um, next up, our third player that you have to draft this season. Get him. <laughs> Michael Pittman. Uh, we saw glimpses of his talent in 2021. We expect to see everything come together for his third year in the league. That classic. I don't know if you want to call it. He had a, a breakout. That's, that's, that's like the old school mentality, right? The third year wide receiver jump, except now it's apparently happening in the rookie season. Right. Now it's happening in the rookie season. Well, it has the last couple for a couple deeds only. Um, True. However, um, Michael Pittman, the classic third year receiver breakout, he broke out last year calling a spade a spade. It just wasn't the ultimate, ultimate breakout because Carson Wentz it was, I don't know, one of the most like inaccurate passers last year. But he's gone. And in comes Matt Ryan, um, who basically was. Uh, a league leader in terms of check down passes to running backs and also is one of the more accurate quarterback passers in the league. Um, Pittman was ninth in target share last season with more than 25% established himself as the wide receiver one or as a wide receiver one in the league. Um, I'm excited to see what he can do with a competent quarterback this year. I mean, you're going to have Jonathan Taylor there to move the chains. There's going to be plenty of opportunity for Pittman to convert and even make big plays. I think that you're going to have guys in the box for Taylor routinely, hopefully freeing up Pittman out wide. So I think that we see an even better continued ascendance of Michael Pittman here in year three. 
And honestly, he's not exactly expensive either in terms of ADP. He's currently going 35th right now. So at the end of the third, beginning of the fourth, I mean, he could be a top yes, six dude. Please. Yeah. And, and I mean, we have him ranked in the, in the top 12 as far as the wide receivers go. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a really good value and somebody that we really like because Matt Ryan's proven in the past, whether it be Julio, whether it be Calvin Ridley, uh, I mean, he even supported uh, Pitts last year as a rookie tight end to, yeah. to deliver top five results. And if you want to do a quick check of who else on the Indianapolis offense are you trusting in the passing game? Uh, <laughs> nobody. So so here we are where Paris it's Campbell, Pittman you're f- like four. <laughs> hey, give me that soup. Like, no, thanks. I, I just want I, I I'm cool with Pittman. There's really nobody else. He's going to get plenty of uh, of opportunities in the red zone. And you hit me with that play action pass and bring those linebackers up and let him operate behind it. Yes, please. All day. So I, I think it's going to be an overly competent offense. There's not a defense that I'm super scared of uh, in that division. By the time you're talking about Houston, the Jaguars or the Titans, I'm fine with that. So uh, what, g- give me a better competent quarterback. Uh, where Pittman's de- dealt with Rivers and Wentz the last two years, I think Matt Ryan's better than both. Uh, so let's see yes. what he's got in year. Yes. Let, yeah, let, let's see what he's got in year three, where he's already a wide receiver two last year. We're projecting that as his absolute floor this year. So uh, yeah, let's let's go with that. I think you can be very comfortable with him as your wide receiver one going into drafts this year. I'm not going to hit you with the play action, but I am going to hit you with my best shot and that and. Me hitting you with my best shot in drafts this season? Come on. Is? You're not even going to hum it. I can't believe. Nope. No. Sorry. Hit me with your best shot. <clears throat> no. You couldn't even say fire so, away. Uh, so, no, honestly, that song gives me nightmares just real quick. So, growing up as a carnival worker at the Kane County Cougars game, which is a minor league baseball affiliate, uh, used to be <laughs> of the Cubs, used to be of the Florida Marlins. They had Dontrell Willis, uh, Beckett there back in like 2002, and then they ended up beating the Cubs in the 2003 playoffs. But, or, yeah, yeah, that's correct. So, uh, I made funnel cakes out on the concession stand. And so, whenever they played Hit Me With a Breast Shot, they would launch water balloons into the stands. Nice. And water and 400 degree oil does not mix. And so, anytime Hit Me With Your Best Shot comes on, it actually gives me nightmares. So, sorry, <laughs> go ahead. Well, my best shot in drafts, somebody that I think is just potentially criminally undervalued this season is Michael Thomas. And I know yeah. that you agree, which is why this is our consensus top six dudes that need to be on teams or on yep. your team. Uh, we're higher on Michael Thomas than everybody. We both have him as basically a borderline top six receiver, not top 12. He's firmly in our top 12s, but he's borderline top six. Yeah. Um, if he's healthy, he's uh, for sure. Lock it, set it, forget it. Wide receiver one. Um, not he, Tyler Lockett. But he hasn't been healthy. He hasn't been healthy. Um, You know, the downside is he hasn't played football since 2020 after electing to have surgery right before the 2021 season. He had a setback in his recovery. He's out kind of right now with a soft tissue injury. I I don't know if any of that is actually I don't know if any of the soft tissue stuff this preseason is real or if none of it bothers me. They just don't want him playing in the preseason game. So they say they have an injury. Michael Thomas. I, I agree has the absolute wide receiver number one overall upside. He was a couple years ago. He didn't deliver on any of those promises the year after. He was hurt all year last year. He didn't play. It killed people that that took him in the fourth, fifth, sixth round. People are getting the same value on him that they got last year, and he's healthy, and he was the number one overall wide receiver three years ago. And he's going in the wins- sixth round. Thank you. Yes, please. So Jameis Winston has shown that he'll ball out. This is the same offense that uh, Peyton was running. I know he's not there anymore, but um, they're still literally running the same exact offense that Michael Thomas was the number one overall wide receiver on three years ago. It has the upside to be wide receiver one uh, value. He has the upside to be wide receiver number one overall going in the fifth or sixth round. Yes, I love it. 
I love it. Um, we're going to switch things up and we're going to go to tight end here. Um, yes. And, and we're going to move to Dalton Schultz, which is kind of maybe to some people it's a name, but for you and I, we are really excited about Dalton Schultz. <laughs> Gary, because we have the Sacco stank on people where a couple years ago it was Zach Ertz and then it was Darren Waller and it just hasn't come to fruition. But here we all are with Dalton Schultz, number three overall tight end last year, who isn't being drafted like that. And that offense is going to offer way more opportunity for Dalton Schultz going forward with Dak Prescott. No more Amari Cooper. And here we are. Why should he not be drafted as the wider or sorry, as the tight end number three, where that's what he finished as last year? Yeah, you can make the case that Waller is coming back healthy. Zach Ertz. okay, fine with Arizona. TJ Hawkinson isn't the answer. So I get the Kyle Pitts upside. You have to take Kelsey. You have to take Andrews. I get going pits, um, but Dalton Schultz is literally right in that conversation because of high, uh, because of how good that offense is going to be this year. Yeah, and to add a little more color, uh, basically whoever Alex and I have gotten the most excited about at tight end each of the last two se- seasons it's has been vastly underwhelmed. So hopefully we don't put that stink on Dalton Schultz. Um, you mentioned uh, him finishing his tight end three last year. He was sixth in targets, third in receptions, and sixth in yards. Amari Cooper's out of town. Uh, Michael Gallup is not healthy to start the season, which is why you have Jalen Tolbert starting at the second wide receiver position. I think all of this dials up CD Lamb volume and Dalton Schultz volume. So, um, yeah, Dalton Schultz is their second best wide receiver. Yeah. So, so let's let's go. It's going to be an offense that's going to throw thirty plus touchdowns. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him have ten or more. Absolutely. No. And lastly, finally, is a little bit of a deeper running back who I think we're going to see his stock continue to rise. It has been week. going it, up it's considerably. Been, it's yeah. been rising. He was an eighth round, ninth round running back. And now he's, I think, going firmly in the ninth round. Let's see. Where is one Rashad Penny being drafted at? Right now, his current ADP is 90 overall. I think that that goes higher and higher and higher. Uh, Rashad yeah, so it's Penny. In somewhere in the eighth round. but And with, with the Kenneth Walker injury that nobody really knows what's going on, maybe yeah. he'll be back, maybe he won't. He could have died, and Pete Carroll will say he's fine in playing week one. Nobody <laughs> knows what's going on. So here we are with Rashad Penny, the number one overall running back the last six weeks last year. Last five weeks was the overall number ah, one running back in close. fantasy. Uh, averaged just over 18 carries a game and 130 plus rushing yards during that stretch. Um, Derrick Henry-esque. Derrick Henry-esque. Uh, you did mention Kenneth Walker, the Dork, Doak Walker Award winner, unanimous All-American coming to town. They drafted him in the second round of April's draft. He is currently out dealing with a hernia issue, as Pete Carroll calls it, a hernia issue. Nobody knows the Seahawks running back position. But going in the eighth round, oh my God, Rashad Penny could be a potential league winner if you set it up with a, you sure. know, a solid four or five picks out of the seven that you make before that. So I am all over Rashad Penny in basically every draft I try to land him. Um, he should be going in the sixth, honestly, or maybe the seventh. So... Love, love yeah, me if, some if not Penny. higher than that, because he looks like an undisputed number one running back for a team that, quite frankly, doesn't have a quarterback. You're like you. Geno Smith is your quarterback. You think you're going to throw the ball a lot? Probably not. So like it's it's almost like Sean Green back with the Jets where who what are they going to do? Throw the ball with Mark Sanchez? Of course, they're not. Turn around and give the ball. Turns out Sean Green didn't work out. Hopefully Rashad Penny does. But this is an offense that's going to be run first, play action pass, get it out to your wide receivers. Penny proved it last year when Russell Wilson was was hurt and wasn't they weren't balling the ball out as well as they, they usually would with with throwing with, with Russ. So here we are. We love Rashad Penny's value. If if you can lock in a running back two in the seventh, eighth, ninth round. You have to do it. He's a great pick. And on that note, we do have a little bit of newsy stuff. 
Yes, newsy stuff. Alex, uh, breaking news while we were sitting here, got a sleeper notification that the Jaguars have traded LaVisca Chenault to the Panthers. Don't care at all. He was somebody that should not have been drafted as high as he was last year. Shout out Marvin Jones Jr. My guy outperformed LaVisca Chenault. Uh, I'm not worried about that. I would be more concerned about Brian Robinson, uh, who was shot a couple times over the weekend in D.C. and what that's going to do with the commander's backfield. Um, I, I'm not worried if, if you're still talking about LaVisca Chenault basically being a nothing burger for the Panthers this year behind Robbie answer behind Robbie Anderson behind DJ Moore. Um, it's it's nothing. His his career is over. Sorry. Over in year three. All right. That does it for the Sackos. Thanks, guys. Please subscribe. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.